Stunt Pile is the newest, and in my opinion, best roller coaster at Silverwood. This is a Rocky Mountain Construction single rail coaster. While at first glance the layout looks nearly identical to the original Raptors, there were some key changes that impact the ride experience. Some good, and some bad. I'll explain which version is better in this review. Rocky Mountain Construction or RMC is located in Hayden, Idaho, just 20 minutes south of Silverwood, and the two have had a long and fruitful relationship. RMC's founder and Fred Grubb built the park's two wood coasters in Timber Terror and Tremors. Then RMC themselves assembled the attached Boulder Beach Water Park and also the Aftershock Roller Coaster. RMC also tested their new topper track technology on Tremors in 2010, and they returned in recent years to add Retrack 208 Steel to both Tremors and Timber Terror. So it was only fitting when Silverwood announced their very own RMC coaster for the 2021 season. This would be Stunt Pilot, a single rail coaster. The ride would have a nearly identical layout to the two original Raptors in Six Flags Fiesta Texas's Wonder Woman Golden Lasso coaster and California's Great America's Railblazer. Stunt Pilot was heavily rumored to have initially been for Kentucky Kingdom. In February 2020, the park filed a height waiver for a roller coaster not so subtly named Raptor. The heightened dimensions matched the two original RMC Raptors. This would have been placed between Eye of the Storm and Storm Chaser, and it was slated to open in 2021. But we know what happened in March of 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic. It hit and muddied the plans of countless amusement parks, so Kentucky Kingdom canceled these plans. Once that happened, it is heavily rumored that Silverwood swooped in and purchased the Raptor. It was built in just a few months and ready to go for the 2021 season, and this was probably a dream scenario for Fred Grubb. He famously wanted to build one of his Raptor coasters quite literally in his backyard. However, he wasn't able to do so because of a nearby airport. So Silverwood getting a Raptor is a nice consolation prize considering it's just down the road from the company he founded. These Raptors are incredibly compact and slender rides. The layout is roughly 100 feet by 300 feet, so Silver was able to cram Stunt Pilot in between the Roaring Creek log flume and the far turnaround on Tremors. This allowed the ride to become the newest addition to Roller Coaster Alley, the section of the park where Silverwood likes to place its most extreme rides. And this coaster looks great on the park's skyline. The pristine white track and bright red supports really pop on a clear day. Not only is this coaster highly visible, but you can also hear this ride from almost anywhere in the park. It has an incredibly loud lift hill, and also an audio cue atop the lift. You can actually hear this from the parking lot if you listen closely. It also has a great presence up close. I've said this about the other Raptors and I'll say it again, this ride looks unnatural in a good way. The odd track design, narrow trains, and breakneck pacing makes this ride look like something straight out of a cartoon. And the park also has added some theming. The name commemorates the park's aviation history. From 1988 to 1996, Silverwood had daily air shows. You can see photos of these in the first part of Stunt Pilot's queue line. When you head outdoors, you pass under a giant biplane. A majority of the queue line takes place outdoors, offering some spectacular views of the layout. And you can also see a few near miss elements that were added. The coaster zooms through a few yellow rings and charges through a barn structure. The final part of the queue takes place in the station. It is a wooden shed with some signage on the walls. And best of all for us coaster nerds, the park posts the cycle times for the past few trains. At Fiesta Texas in Great America, it is highly advised to start your day with their Raptors. At those parks, the Raptors have one of the lowest capacities in the park. It's the opposite at Silverwood. Stun Pilot easily has the best capacity of any coaster in the park. Not only is it the only one that can and often runs two trains, but it has two other things going for it. First, it is always staffed with multiple employees. Compare that to the other coasters that often had just one staff member working the ride. Second, it has a continuously moving load platform, so it's like a well-oiled assembly line. Guests board the vehicle, and employees quickly push down the restraints. The train could be stopped if any guests needed more time, and this would happen if someone towards the back needed to store a bag off to the side, but it was typically stopped for just a few seconds at most. While it is tempting to start your day with Stunt Pilot, 
I would not advise doing so for three reasons. One, it typically opens with just one train, so the line will move the slowest right after it opens. The second one is added an hour or two into the day. Two, the ride will speed up as the day progresses. I didn't notice this as much with the other Raptors, but I did notice this behavior with Stunt Pilot. Three, the ride will likely have little to no queue line by the mid-afternoon. Even on a beautiful summer Saturday, the coaster was typically just a 5 minute wait maximum for the second half of the day. And if you get a chance to ride this at night, it has a cool multicolored light package illuminating the supports as a bonus. Meanwhile, the wood coasters are pulling 30 to 45 minute waits most of the day because of their lower throughputs. So I would start with those, or the sometimes finicky aftershock. It is also worth noting that Stun Pilot appears to have a single rider line. There was signage for an express lane when you reached the final section of the queue line. However, this was blocked off in my visits to the park. But considering how late this appears on the queue line, you might as well continue using the regular line for two reasons. One, your group can stay together. Two, you can pick your seat. With the moving load platform, you need to take the next available row. However, the ride's employees have no issue if you wait off to the side for a row further back in the train, or the next train altogether. But I think the money seat in this ride, as with all the Raptors, is the very back row. That is where you get the strongest airtime. Now it's time to discuss the changes between Stun Pilot and the original Raptors. There are three key areas. I think the first two are honestly positive changes. First, this ride has a longer train. As with the other Raptors, you sit single file, but unlike Railblazer and Wonder Woman that have just an 8 person train, Stun Pilot has two extra rows, so it can hold a max of 10 riders per train. Second, this ride has the newer restraints. You can find these harnesses on the newer Raptors like Six Flags Magic Mountain's Wonder Woman or Six Flags Great Adventure's Jersey Devil Coaster. You still have an overhead lap bar with straps, but the latter are more comfortable. Third, the ride has some modified profiling compared to the original Raptors. These negatively impact the ride experience in my opinion, and I'll cover each change with my element by element breakdown. Once dispatched, you head up the 105 foot or 32 meter tall lift hill. This is a swift but loud lift hill. At the top, a speaker tells you the sky is yours. You then turn 180 degrees, getting a spectacular view of both the roller coaster alley section of the park and the distant mountains. But the turn itself has been modified from the original Raptors. Both Wonder Woman and Railblazer dip down and up on this turn. This sort of throws you into the first drop. However, it does create a potential valley point high above the ground. Stunt Pilot instead has a much flatter turn with a slight downwards grade to it. This is tamer, but it still does offer a smidge of laterals from the lack of banking. The entry into the drop is flatter. This has the benefit of allowing the front row to sort of hang over the plunge for an extra second, but you really want to be in the back rows for this element. The extra two rows do their best to compensate for the modified entry. You are launched upwards and get very strong ejector airtime in that back row. I think the airtime is more intense than the original Raptors because the profiling sort of bucks you upwards. But Stun Pilot still has an excellent drop. But that's not all this drop offers. There are two excellent hedge hoppers on the way down. One with the mid drop and another with the brake run. Then you also get blasted with good positive G's in the pullout. Next comes the dive loop. And this is the element that changed the most from the old Raptors. And that's a shame because the old one is one of the best elements on the ride. On Wonder Woman and Railblazer, you don't start the twist until you're at the apex of the element. So you basically have half a camelback followed by a sharp rotating plunge. This results in powerful ejector airtime before being hit with intense laterals. On Stunt Pilot, you start the twist before you reach the apex. This unfortunately designs out most of the airtime. You now just get some faint float especially in front where you momentarily hang forwards while you wait for the rest of the train to catch up. Then you have a disorienting flip back down to ground level. The descent does offer nice positive G's though. Next comes the S hill. On Wonder Woman and Railblazer, the train is level over the apex. On Stun Pilot, you are banked sideways at the highest point. This is another element that I think was more intense than the original Raptors. 
the laterals felt more abrupt, and the airtime felt a tad more powerful. That being said, you still get great ejector in any row on Stunt Pilot, as long as you've given the coaster a few laps to warm up. And this S-Hill is a surprise near miss in the pullout as you dive through a ring. Next comes the turnaround. You rapidly twist upwards, building solid positive Gs. I started to gray out if I sat towards the front. Then there's an S-Bend high above the ground. On the original Raptors, you zoom through this maneuver. On Stun Pilot, you do have a faint moment to catch your breath on the S-Bend though. But things pick back up for the second half. You have a sizable plunge back down to ground level. This offers a good and abrupt ejector pop in the back rows. But again, it felt a tad less forceful than the original Raptors. That's most evident if you ride in the front row. On Railblazer and Wonder Woman, the entry into this drop is so sharp and quick that even front row riders will get a pop of airtime. That doesn't happen on Stunt Pilot. There are two great head choppers though. First, you narrowly avoid some supports on the way down. Second, you charge through another ring entering the next element. And that next element is a cutback. This has a smidge of hang time. Those in front get traditional hang time, while those in the back get something more akin to lateral hang time. You then zip through another ring and navigate my favorite inversion on Stunt Pilot, the corkscrew. This offers lots of floaty hang time, much more so than the original Raptors. You seem to spend more time going through it. This is the one element that I think improved from the originals. And the exit has another phenomenal near miss as you charge through a barn. And if you watch this off-ride, you'll hear some animals clucking afterwards. Meanwhile, those on ride whiz around a low turnaround. It is super speedy, and it offers some OKGs as well. You then jump into the final breaks, getting some good floater up front, and some lift towards the back. You then decelerate, getting applauded for your expert flying. If the train ahead of you hasn't stopped in the station, you'll keep on rolling into the station. Otherwise, you may stop in the brake run for a few seconds. But in short order, you'll return to the station and you'll be asked to hop out fast. This ends the 1,800 foot or 550 meter long coaster. This is a short ride. While there is a bevy of elements, you do feel the lack of length a bit here. Now let's talk about this ride's pacing and smoothness. Pacing is one of the biggest strengths of this layout. You fluidly cruise from one element to the next with minimal downtime. As for smoothness, this is where Stunt Pilot has an advantage over the other Raptors. My recent rides on Fiesta's Wonder Woman and Great Adventure's Jersey Devil have had a very noticeable shuffle. Then Railblazer's final turn has a bump or two in it. However, Stunt Pilot is butter smooth start to finish. Not sure if it's the trains, track, or maintenance, but whatever the cause may be, it was much appreciated and made this coaster even easier to marathon. So what would I rate Stunt Pilot? I would give this single rail coaster an 8 out of 10. I love the three distinct spots of intense negative Gs on the two main drops, and also that S hill. And the inversions are fun too. Add in the wonderful pacing and smoothness, and this ride is a winner. That being said, it is a short ride, and more importantly, it is a step down from the original Raptors. The dive loop is very noticeably neutered, and a few other spots were toned down a bit. However, it is still a great coaster, and my favorite attraction is Silverwood. Just don't expect the raw intensity to match something like Railblazer or Wonder Woman. So those are my thoughts on Stunt Pilot as Silverwood. How do you think this ride compares to the other Raptors? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.